Hi, Ben Salisbury here. I am excited to bring you this recording of a webinar I did a few years ago uh, to show you how to do Winery Direct and Spirits Direct deals. Now, if you're not familiar with this process, you probably have seen it and just didn't know much about it. Total Wine and More really perfected this idea that you could, as a retailer, you could go directly to wineries and distilleries all over the world, form an intimate relationship with them, bring their products into your retail store using a clearing distributor instead of a traditional three-tier distributor where the markup is much higher. And what this allows the retailer, like Total Wine, to do is make a much fatter profit margin on the product. Uh, when you walk into most big liquor store chains today, you see evidence everywhere of these winery direct and spirits direct relationships. They're not very shy about it. In fact, if you go to Total Wine's website, they're very proud of it. They'll tell you all about how it works. Well, this has caused all of Co Total Wine's competitors to want to do a similar thing. And so this spells huge opportunity for wineries and craft distilleries. And in this video, I'm going to show you exactly how it works and how you can do it too. So I hope you stay for the whole training. One quick thing to add, if you don't already have a traditional three-tier distributor in a particular state, this makes you a perfect candidate to set up a winery direct or spirits direct relationship with some of the big retailers in that market. If you already have a traditional three-tier distributor in that state, then you really can't do this. So. Um, this is going to benefit a lot of you who don't have broad national distribution. In any case, take, uh, take a look at the video. Be sure and let me know of any questions that you have. We're always standing by to help. Enjoy the seminar. So recording is going. Let's just jump right in. Um, what we're going to cover today, uh, here's a short list of things, which was also on the, the cover letter or the invite that I sent out, so none of this will be new. You know, what is Winery Direct, Spirits Direct, and why should you care about it? Do you qualify for these types of deals? What are the benefits to the retailer? One of the benefits to your brand and your company? In which channels of trade can these deals be done? On-premise, off-premise, chains, independence. And what are all the components you need to consider if you're going to be successful at this? This is my main, the main ground I want to try to cover today. Um, so... And I thought I would preempt some of the questions we're probably going to get. Uh, the, I talk to people a lot about this, Spirits Direct, Wine Direct stuff, and these are some of the most common questions. You know, is it legal? Almost everybody wants to know, is this legal? Yes, it's legal if you do it right. And today we're going to talk about how to do it right. How and where do you start? Really, this is, a, 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 this is something anyone can do if you don't already have a three-tier distributor. And the best place to start is to learn the process, learn how it works, learn how the game is played, learn what to say and what not to say. And that's a big part of why I'm doing this webinar. Uh, do I have to have a private label? No, you don't. You can, you can do it with a private label, but you don't have to have a private label. And, and you'll see that coming up. Can anyone do this or just the big companies? Ironically, a lot of the big companies can only do it if they have a private label. Because once you have a three-tier distributor in a particular state, you can't do uh, these winery direct or spirits direct deals. So actually, it's an advantage for you if you're a small producer and you don't already have distribution in a bunch of states. So this can be a real game changer for a small maker. Uh, what additional investments do you need? This is the best part about this whole thing. You really don't need to, to spend any money other than your time to educate yourself and then do the research on who these candidates might be, which I'm going to talk about today too. And how can I get more deep training on all this? Once you go down this road, you're always looking for more information, ways to improve your success. And so at the end of this presentation, I have an option for you to go deeper. So what is Winery Direct, Spirits Direct? I always start this conversation by talking about Total Wine. They, I don't know if they pioneered it or were the first ones to do it, but they are certainly the company that has taken this to a whole new level. It is central to their business model. So I'm going to read this uh, definition right here. Wineries and distilleries offer certain brands or SKUs as exclusives to one retailer for the purpose of providing much fatter profit margins. That is the game. That's the essence of the game. If the retailer can make 40 or 50 points of your product 
they're going to get behind it. They're going to stack it. They're going to put it in their flyers. They're going to promote it because it's really hard to get those kind of margins on branded goods because the consumer is well aware of what a 750 of Jack Daniels costs. They're well aware of what a 750 of Clos de Bois Chardonnay costs. It's really hard to make a fatter profit margin on things that people know about. So Winery Direct and Spirits Direct is a program that is available to anyone under certain conditions, which we'll talk about. But it's really kind of been brought to the fore by Total Wine & More. By the way, I have an asterisk next to this word, a retailer, one retailer. Ideally, if you're small, you're going to want to approach one retailer per state. Uh, you could do this with a big national chain, but I don't recommend that for the smaller producers. There's an article that you can, you can just type and go or Google it just like you see here winery direct the secret to total wine and more success. I highly suggest you read that article. Uh, they're not shy about talking about winery direct and spirits direct as a central part of their business model. But it's open to you. If you're on this call and you own a wine or spirits brand, you can do this too. So this next section should be really interesting because I'm going to show you how to tell if a retailer is doing Winery Direct and Spirits Direct. A lot of times it's super obvious like this. This is Total Wine and More. I don't know how you could make it any more obvious. It says Winery Direct. Now the average consumer really doesn't know what that means. It really doesn't mean much to them. And what Total Wine and everyone else is doing this would like the consumer to think is that they've gone direct to wineries or distilleries. They've gotten this great deal and they're passing the savings on to the consumer, which is a total bunch of hogwash. That is not how it works at all. Look at this, and I, you know, uh, I hope I don't get myself in trouble for this, but this first and local Cabernet that they're selling for $12.99 a bottle, they're making at least 50 points, maybe 60, 65 on this. So basically the consumer is paying $13 for a $5 bottle of wine. And so I don't see a lot of passing the savings on to customers. The, game, the way this game works is fatter margins for the retailer. But let's, let's look into how to tell if they're doing it. I've got a long list of things. I'm going to go through them fairly quickly. I'm recording this webinar. I'll ha be happy to give you a link to the recording. So you don't need to take notes. Um, uh, you'll get a link to the recording. You can come back and watch this again and pause it and do whatever. But the first telltale sign is brands that you've never heard of. Now, I've been in the wine business and spirits business for 35 years. If I haven't heard of a brand, it's probably Spirits Direct or Wine Direct. Uh, the, what makes this work is the consumer doesn't know. Uh, to them, they look at a shelf and, and it's all a big mystery to them. They can't tell what is a Spirits Direct or Winery Direct brand versus a, a regular one. So that really works to the advantage of the retailer. But that's the first way to tell if you've got brands you've never heard of. Next is deep discounts. <laughs> this is almost always a telltale sign. You know, 50% off, 25% off, 30% off. It, it's just a, you know, a classic uh, in-store marketing technique that they are discounting it down to the price that gets them 50 points, 50 points margin. But it's always a, a telltale sign when you see deep discounts. Also, if you are a, a retailer and you're doing Spirits Direct and Wine Direct, that's the only thing that makes it to the floor. Uh, that's another telltale sign to see uh, because they just, everything on the floor, the stuff you've never heard of, plastered with sign, signage and discounts and all kind of stuff. Um, another thing is it's the only products allowed to have shelf talkers. You know, I live in Texas and if I go to the closest goody goody, which does a ton of winery direct and spirits direct, or I go to a specs and I walk through the aisles, the only things with the shelf talker are the things that are winery direct and spirits direct. It's so obvious. They're trying to promote the things that they make fatter margins on. And you, the winery owner, distillery owner, you have an opportunity to get in on this game. Another telltale sign is that they've got some kind of rewards program. And guess what counts to the rewards program? Only the things that are winery direct and spirits direct. Now, I'm part of the bottle club at Goody Goody. Um, I'm also part of the, the club at Total Wine & More. I like to shop at Total Wine & More because they have an amazing selection. But uh, I don't ever buy Winery Direct or Spirit Strike stuff because I know I'm paying way more than I should. But the only when I give the cashier my card or my phone number at the, at the cash register, 
they, I'm only ever going to get credit for purchases that are part of the winery direct or spirits direct. Uh, so it's just part of the game. But it, whenever you see those kind of uh, deals, it's a telltale sign that you're looking at a winery direct or spirits direct. Uh, you'll see terms like exclusive or direct. This term exclusive scares people. Uh, in certain circumstances, it's not necessarily legal, but in most cases it is. And I'm happy to, at the end, when I tell you how you can go deeper into this, um, I can rest, uh, you know, help you rest assuredly that will keep you afoul of the law. But direct, exclusive, these terms are always a tip-off. Uh, another big tip-off is if, it's, if they have a website and a shopping cart and an e-commerce, uh, this is one of the best ways for them to move a lot of winery direct and spirits direct stuff through the store. And the last telltale sign is some kind of email list. An email list is the lifeblood of a re modern retailer. They take great care to collect email addresses from their best customers and they're always sending them offers. But I promise you this, the only offers you're ever going to get are for their wine direct and spirits direct. Uh, unless, unless they're trying to get you in the store. So maybe they'll have a super hot price on Jack Daniels, a super hot price on Tito's to get you in the store. But once in the store, they're going to do everything they can to switch you over to one of the... Uh, uh, spirits direct wine direct so here's some more evidence of this this is goody goodies flyer it comes out in the email uh, I, I they print them in the store the only products that ever make it onto this are their winery direct and spirits direct in fact one of the ways I find out what other retailers are doing this is I look on these flyers I go to wine searcher I and it works so wine searcher works for spirits too. So I could put Copper Peak Canadian Whiskey in wine searcher and see what other retailers are using it. Nine times out of ten, they're doing spirits direct too. So this is a, a wonderful tool, a wonderful window into this world. Uh, down in Florida, ABC has been doing this for a long time. They've got a ton of brands, but they've even branded their wine direct spirits direct program. They call it sourced and certified, and it's quite. Uh, it gives me quite a chuckle when I see how they describe this program. Hey, nothing against ABC. They move a lot of wine. You can sell them wine and spirits too. But look at these brands. I've never heard of any of these wine brands. I've certainly never heard of any of these spirits brands. Uh, a little bit more about their sourced and certified. I won't take time to read through this, but here you see there. Our team can go directly to the source so that we can make extra profit. They don't, they don't say that. But that is the idea. Exclusively for you. Um, I love this where it says sourced and certified as a collection of wine and spirits. We buy directly from the maker or distiller at lower price and save you money. Uh, I'm sorry. That's not exactly how it works, but I guess you can say that more evidence over here, shopping cart, lower prices. Uh, here's another example. This is a, a, a two or three unit liquor store in Northern Kentucky, right on their website. They talk about their, program for wine and spirits called depths direct. So right away, you've got uh, somebody that you can approach. If you, if you're not in Kentucky now and you don't have a three tier distributor, this is one of the people you should be approaching because they do a lot of wine direct spirits direct business. And it is very obvious right on their website. One more I want to show you. This also is from Northern Kentucky. Uh, this is party source. This is depending on who you talk to one of the single largest retailers of wine and spirits in the U S it's an amazing store. When you walk in, there's tons of displays everywhere, and the only thing on display are their winery direct and spirits direct. So I hope this has been helpful to tell you how to identify, because the idea, your homework, your next steps, has a lot to do with getting a list of these people, researching who else is doing it, and then begin to, get to contact them. So let's just briefly talk about the benefits. Benefits to the retailer, now this is, the part of why I'm doing this webinar is I don't know where else you could go to get this information. I don't know of anyone else who's showing people how to do this game and telling you the truth about what's really going on. So the benefits to the retailer, uh, they make higher profit margin. That is the engine that drives this whole uh, way of doing business. Without those higher profit margins, why bother? And the reason they can get higher profit margins is because there's no way for the consumer to compare prices. They, they stand in the store and they pick up that bottle of wine and they look at it and they can search on the phone to the heart's content. They're not going to find a, a comparison price. 
it works to the retailer's advantage that no one has heard of that brand. So if you're a distillery in Nebraska and you are able to do a wine a spirits direct deal with someone in Florida, chances are they those Floridians have never heard of your brand, which is good news for you because you can work out a deal with the retailer. They'll make a nice fat profit. You'll move far more product than you ever needed to. Uh, the third benefit to the retailers, they can now afford to cut price on brand name goods. Total Wine does this. They offer very cheap deals on brand name goods to get you in the store. Once you're in there, they have an army of people on the floor. When they see you reach for that bottle of Jack Daniels, there's somebody right there to, to talk you into another Tennessee whiskey that is the, you know, often the same price, but you know, much fatter profit margin for them. So what are the benefits to you, the winery or the distillery? Uh, a couple of key ones. One is no need to lower your price. You don't need to just sell at your regular FOB. The, the, the person who's, who's getting cut out is the middleman, which I'm going to show you in a second how that works. But this is good news. You don't need to be aggressive on your discounting. Just take your normal FOB uh, and, and sell it. Make your money. Make them, you know, make them profitable. This is profitable business for you, this uh, Spirits Direct Winery Direct. And there's really no need to spend money on incentives, salespeople, you know, distributors, all that stuff. You know, you could, like, let's say you first, when you first get into one of these relationships, it's probably a good idea to spend a little money on Facebook advertising or do what you can to increase awareness in the community that your brand is in that store. But really, there's not a lot of need to because the retailer is going to do a lot of promoting for you because they, you're giving them a big incentive to do so. And sometimes to really compress the time frame, get a bunch of these deals done, you may want to employ the services of a broker who has these relationships in place already. Now, the going rate is anywhere from 10 to 15% of actual sales uh, to do that. Let me just stop and see if there's anything going on in the chat. Nope, okay, let me keep going. Uh, so do you qualify to do this? This is a big question I get a lot. And the short answer is, if you meet these three criteria, then you are good to go. If you don't already have a traditional three-tier distributor in a particular state, then you are free to pursue Spirits Direct and Winery Direct relationships with retailers in that state, both on and off-premise, chains and independents. And before I forget to tell you, there are some single-unit retailers who do a ton of business, especially off their website. So you don't need to look for chains necessarily. What you want to look for is the busiest, most successful retailer in that particular market. Uh, so that's the first key, is if you don't already have a traditional three-tier distributor. If you do, you can't pursue Wine Direct and Spirits Direct in that state. And for those of you who are LibDib clients, LibDib is considered a it's part of the three-tier distributor. They are officially a distributor. But you can still do, do some, in certain states, you might be able to use LibDib to get the goods to them. Just really depends. But this is the key, not having a traditional three-tier. Number two, willing and able to reach out directly to the retailer. You're going to have to do this. You're going to have to make a list of who, who's doing it, and you're going to have to reach out. Uh, so you're going to have to do it yourself or designate someone on your team. You're kind of on your own. But though it is so worth it. But if you're not willing to do that, if you're not willing to put your salesperson hat on, then probably shouldn't pursue it. And the third thing is you really do need to understand the pitch and how this game works. Okay, we got a question. How long do these direct to trade deals last and what is the best practice when negotiating this? Great questions. Well, from what I see, these deals last a long time if the product is selling off the shelf. If somebody brings in your product and it just sits there and in spite of the retailer's efforts to stack it and put it in their flyer and put it in their frequent shopper program and feature an email, if it doesn't sell, it won't last for very long. But generally, these things are, are, are chosen very selectively up front. Nobody, no retailer wants to take a risk that they're going to buy a whole pallet of product and that it's not going to sell. So they try to do their due diligence before entering in the relationship. So generally, these deals stay in place for a long time. Uh, the best practices for negotiating it, that is coming up. Uh, I'm not, I'm not going to get too deeply into it today, uh, but I do have a way for you to obtain the exact pitch. I literally have sketched out a pitch for that you can use wh exactly what to say, how to say it, and what not to say. Oh, I think we have another question. Do we? 
Okay. So here's how this works. You have a winery and, or distillery. I'm just using a winery for my illustration. Typically, you, you sell your goods to a three-tier distributor. They pay you. Good, you're good to go. You get your money right away. It sits on their floor until somebody sells it. Now, you'd like to think the distributor would do the selling, but nowadays they're overwhelmed. They don't really do much selling. You still have to go and sell it yourself. Think of your traditional three-tier distributor as someone who does shipping and invoicing, and that's about it. Anything else is gravy. Uh, they sell it to the retailer. But the traditional three-tier distributor is going to mark it up, and they're going to take 25 to 30, sometimes 35% for themselves. But the way uh, Spirits Direct and Winery Direct works is you don't use a traditional three-tier. You do use a distributor, so you technically are uh, legally within the three-tier system. But these clearing distributors do not warehouse the goods. They just clear them in a bump the dock type of way. So let's say there's a winery in Washington state. They sold a truckload of wine to a retailer in Kentucky. The clearing distributor will arrange transportation. They'll come up to the winery. They'll pick up the goods. They'll take them to their warehouse. They won't unload the trailer. They will just bump the dock, technically receiving the goods in their warehouse, turn right around and deliver them to the retailer's warehouse. The, these clearing distributors have no salespeople, no website, no warehouse, or, or just a kind of a faux warehouse. It's all perfectly legal. They have a license. They are licensed distributors. They're just really hard to find because they don't really want to, I mean, it's, they don't need to. They don't need the exposure. Typically, a good clearing distributor has all the business they need. But this is how the, you give extra profit to the retailer. It's not you that suffers the profit margin. It's the middle tier. And so this is good news for the winery or distillery and good news for the retailer. That's the essence of this game. Okay, we got a little chat going here. Uh, Reynold Richards, how do you get a list of those doing Spirits Direct? <laughs> uh, hold that thought, Reynolds. He's too, he's too smart for me. Okay. So just uh, before I run into um, a couple other uh, things here, uh, the three because I want to talk about the three types of customers you're going to run into. These are two examples of uh, real live clearing distributors right here in Texas. United Wine and Spirits is the clearing distributor of choice for specs. They move so much product through this place, it's not even funny. United Wine and Spirits makes a ton of money just on the transactions. So they might make five, eight, six bucks a case on every case they move through there, and they're happy to do it. And all the extra profit goes to specs. Uh, goody Goody uses Chatelaine. And, uh, you know, look, look, the reason I cut and pasted this is this is, there's no website. There's no business hours. There's no phone number. There doesn't need to be. Um, and, if, and if you look at the Google Street View, you know, but this is it. This is the game. These are the, these are clearing distributors are hard to find. But I will tell you this before I forget. Typically, the retailer will tell you what clearing distributor to use. So if you reach out to Depths in Northern Kentucky and they say, you know what? We would love to have another Pinot Grigio in the $15 range that we can make some nice coin on. Uh, well, here's a PO for a pallet, and we want you to use this clearing distributor. That's typically how it works. Uh, not always, but typically. So there are three types of Winery Direct and Spirit Direct customers you're going to see out there. Now, this is very important because this is not a one-size-fits-all kind of a thing. One, people have been doing it for a long time, like ABC, Specs, uh, Publix, Binnie's in Chicago, BevMo in California. Some of these people have been doing it for a long time, certainly Total Wine and more. And they may or may not have as many open slots. So they're going to look for niches. They're going to look for products they don't already have. It's a little, little tougher. I would still pursue these for sure. Uh, number two, uh, they've been, so the second type is they've been doing it a long, for a short time and are very keen to land more. They've got a taste of this game. They want more. So it takes a lot of research to, to find these people. And the third, which to me is the most exciting thing about Winery Direct and Spirit Direct, there are a lot of retailers, both on-premise and off, chains and independents, don't even know this is a thing, don't even know this is possible. So if you can find and get to some of these people, you'll have to educate them and introduce them to it, start small. But this, this opportunity, pursuing uh, Winery Direct and Spirit Direct, is uh, wide open at this point. It really is. So... If you want to go deeper, man, that half hour went by fast. If you want to go deeper, if I have 
captured your appetite, whet your appetite for this, I want to point you to some additional resources. Uh, we have recently launched an online academy called Salisbury Creative Group Academy with a lot of online courses. Our newest online course is how to do Winery Direct and Spirit Direct deals. Now, this goes much, much deeper than what we're talking about today. It, it, and I'll, I'll show you the curriculum in just a second. So who should take this course? Wineries and distilleries that do not currently have three-tier wineries and distilleries that are frustrated with their lack of sales and want more sales and more profitable ones. And wineries and distilleries that do not have any or very many salespeople of their own. Here's, this is the answer to your question, uh, Reynolds. You know, how do I find good candidates? I go into that in great detail in this course. Uh, most people want to know the math. They want to know how the math works. How do I get my calculator out and present the deals appropriately? Because you usually get one time to make that pitch and you want everything to be right. You want to have all the I's dotted and T's crossed. And this course will show you the exact math that you need. And as I already said, another part of the, the big value in this course is the pitch. I write out in detail exactly what to say. Now, the people have already gone through this course. So here's a couple of people that are giving me testimonials. This is Hayes Kelman, the founder of Boot Hill Distillery up in Kansas. He said, I just finished the Spirit Direct course. Great job putting all that together. I have already begun the search for a list of relevant retailers around the country and have found a few good prospects. So in my course, I show you how to conduct the research. In fact, one of the things I do, there are three videos in there that show you how to use three different tools, exactly what to look for and how to search. And before long, you'll have a nice list of people to approach. Then you can use my scripts to approach them. Um, but even if you don't take this course, uh, you've learned more today than most of your competitors know. You can go back and rewatch this uh, and begin to start looking, opening your eyes to these opportunities. So even if you don't take the course, you are well on your way to doing something your a lot of competitors don't even know about. Uh, on the wine side, this is uh, Mindy Oliver. Mindy Oliver is a one-woman show in Paso Robles. She's got a beautiful brand called Chroma Vera, and she's already sold some of these deals. Uh, she says that your course on Winery Direct was eye-opening and insightful with ideas and tools I can put to use right now. This is the curriculum. There's an intro video from me, uh, lesson one. Uh, intro to why a lot of the stuff I'm covering today, but I've also there's a lot of stuff in the course that I'm not I don't have time to get into today. This course will walk you through everything. And it, if you're interested in going right for the math, which most people are, you'll find that in lesson two. But these are the the bonus videos that show you. I get on the computer live and I record myself searching for these uh, types of accounts. So this is very very um, valuable, very very beneficial. So what does this cost, right? Uh, this, the regular price is 500 bucks. I'm offering a hundred dollar discount for everyone who took this webinar. Um, I use this coupon code at checkout to get a hundred dollars off. The coupon's good till the end of February. And I'm also throwing in a free 30 minute one-on-one -on -one consultation. You ask me anything you want. We'll spend 30 minutes. I'll point you right in the right direction to get this stuff going, get some new revenue, uh, cranked up right away. How do you access the course? go to my website. That's the fastest, most direct way. Go to salisburycreative.com. You'll see right here the menu, online courses. And when you click online courses, it will take you to the school. And once you click view online courses, there you can see. I've got other courses too that you may want. If you've never taken this one, this one's free. The Modern Sales Playbook for Wine Spirits. It's a free course, six or seven videos, 53 minutes uh, while you're in there, take this course. It'll help you in a lot of other areas of your business. Okay, let me check the Q&A. Anything going on in the chat? So if you have questions, use the Q&A uh, or the chat. I will find you on here. Let's see. Oh, we have one open question, I think. No, that one's been answered. I don't know if you guys can see my screen when I'm opening these online questions, but that's okay if you can. So if you've got questions, go to the Q&A and type them in or go to the chat and type them in. I'm going to take a quick look to see who has joined us. Oh, I see you, Jack. Hi, Jack. All right. No questions? No one has any questions? 
either I did an amazingly thorough job or you're just shy. Okay, I think if there aren't any more questions, I think that's probably the end. If you do have questions or you think of questions later, most of you have my email address. Just shoot me an email. I'm going to distribute the link to the recording of this webinar so you can watch it again. And uh, some people signed up and weren't able to attend, and so I'm going to make sure they get the link too. Okay, well, if there are no other questions, then thank you so much for giving me 30 minutes out of your busy day. I hope this was valuable to you. Uh, I hope that you're going to be on your way towards uh, making some of these things work. Oh, wait a minute. There's some more questions. Hold on. Dang it. Okay, we don't see your screen. Uh, here we go. What should, what should one use brokers for? Okay, so I, I don't... <laughs> I would only recommend using a broker if you know that that person has a really good relationship. For example, there's a broker, his name is Jerry Jones, lives in South Carolina, I think South Carolina or North Carolina. He's been calling an ABC for a long time. He'd be a good guy to approach if you want to get into ABC. So there are people like that, and I'm happy to help point you in the direction of the brokers, but they would short uh, for their 10% commission, they would shorten the, the access to the, to the buyer. They'll get you in front of the right buyer, but they'll do it for a fee. Most small makers that I know, are they just want to do it themselves. Like Mindy at Chrome of Air, she just wrote a letter to owner to owner and they wrote back and now they're doing business. So that's certainly one way to go. But that's what the brokers do. They use their relationships with these people to get you in front of them. Uh, Reynolds asks another question. Can you have only one direct spirit in a state? Yes, that's a great question. Uh, actually, not necessarily. Like take New York, right? You could have one in upstate New York, uh, like Rochester area. You could have another one in Long Island. You could have another one in Westchester. The key is that the, that the retailers do not compete with each other. So you could have one in Kansas City, Missouri, and one in Kansas City, Kansas. I think you're good to go. Well, maybe that's a bad example. Oh, here's a good example. In Chicago, if you have one in Chicago, and then you have another one in downstate. Uh, so you can do more than one in one state. Florida, you'd want somebody in Miami, someone in central Florida like Tampa or Clearwater area, another one a little further north to Orlando and maybe someone up in the panhandle. So you can do more than one per state, but they need to not compete with each other. Okay, I almost missed those questions. Sorry, guys. I'll try to do better on my next webinar. Okay, well, if you do have more questions after this, just shoot me an email or a text. Thank you, everyone, for taking your time to attend the webinar. I appreciate it.